Hey guys, this is iFudge here, and welcome to my Glacor guide. Now in today's Glacor guide, I'm just going to be showing you some Glacor basics, including their attacks, each phase to go through, the equipment that I recommend, spells and stuff, levels that I recommend, and basically how I kill them. Note that my method isn't the best method to kill them. Well, it might be, it might not be, probably isn't, but my method, I kill them efficiently. I get around 500k magic experience per hour at the current time. Also, a side note, I will have time ticks down in the description if you need to jump to any subtopic at any given time. So thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy. As for basic Glacor requirements, this is what I require. The Ritual of the Majorat quest is required to even walk in the cave. I know it's a long quest line, but it is very much worth it because of the drops in experience per hour. I also require 92 or 95 prayer for Soul Split and Torment. You can try killing Glacors with regular prayers, but I imagine it would be much harder. Plus, I don't go for regular prayers in this guide. I also recommend, not so much require, 96 herb lore, as overload potions do help with damage per second rates. I require 92 or 95 magic for either Blood Barrage or Fire Surge. Blood Barrage is better in the way that it hits multiple Glake Heights, but it is a bit more costly than Fire Surge. I personally use Blood Barrage because I make the money back plus profit through drops. If you need, you can summon a familiar. The two I'd recommend are either the Unicorn for healing or a Yak for, for more inventory space. I personally don't use a familiar unless I use my clan's avatar for better experience rates, but unexperienced players may want to play it safe and use a Unicorn or a Yak. A Bunyip may even be helpful if you really need. I also require basic knowledge of the EOC combat and abilities. As for armor, I'd recommend using Virtus if you can afford it. If not, then Subjugation. The reason why I rank these two sets of robes over Sea Singers, Ganodermic, and Arams is because Virtus and Subjugation have a damage buffing effect, whereas Sea Singers, Ganodermic, and Arams are defensive orientated. As for weapons, I'd recommend the highest tier dual wielding magic items you can use. The Seismic Wand and Singularity are pretty new during this time period and aren't too many in the game yet, so I'd suggest using a Virtus Wand and book over anything. If you can't afford that, it'd be best to use a Chaotic Staff followed by a Staff of Armadil, Staff of Light, Wand of Treachery with an Arams book, or even an Arams Wand with an Arams book. For the next slot, I'd recommend using an Arcane Stream Necklace as it gives the highest magic critical percentage. If you don't have one, I'd suggest either a Fury or a Glory. For the Ring slot, the best item to use is an Imbued Seer's Ring, but I personally use a 6th Age Circuit from the World Wakes quest because it is free and as good as an Imbued Onyx Ring or a regular Seer's Ring in critical percentage. A Ring of Life may even be useful for when either servers lag out or if you accidentally get owned. For gloves and boots, I recommend Virtus as they're the highest damage buffing gloves and boots for magic, followed by subjugation gloves and boots. If those are out of budget, Ganodermic work well as well. For auras, I'd recommend the Penance Aura over any, as it will save a lot on prayer potions. The Vampirism Aura works well too, and it gives small portions of HP back through each hit. Runic Accuracy or Dark Magic Auras may increase damage a bit too. I also use a Scrimshaw of the Elements, which adds more base damage to the elements of spells, meaning more damage per second. Another useful Scrimshaw is the Scrimshaw of Magic, which gives a small magic accuracy buff. For the cape slot, I would recommend a god cape from the mage arena because it gives the highest amount of critical percentage. But if you do not have one of these, I would recommend either a max cape or a skill cape. The Glacor uses basic attacks involving every type of combat, melee, range, and mage, and it's pretty dangerous with any of these. Since we're using magic, we can count its melee attack out of the scenario. The Glacor has a random attack where it will throw multiple icicles at you. You can dodge it by simply clicking to walk away from it. If it hits you, you will automatically have half of your life points deducted. Watch out for using abilities that may stall your movement while it sends out these icicles. The Glacor has another random attack in which it will stun and freeze you from afar for a few seconds. You can still attack, but you will be frozen to the spot for a few seconds unless you use the freedom ability to free yourself. Note that this is totally random and it will usually happen at the worst times. The Glacor also has another freezing attack that only happens when you're in melee range. It will freeze you into a giant ice cube, and if you can't get out in time, the Glacor will strike you for half your life points. If you ever get caught in one, you can avoid the Glacor strike by spam clicking away from it to break out of the ice. The first phase in killing a Glacor is rather easy. Simply attack it and use abilities until it reaches half health. There are certain abilities that I personally recommend that I will get to later in the guide. The Glacor will also attack with basic combat styles and its random attacks as mentioned before. At half health, the Glacor will send out three minions to try and deal with your pesky adventurer. The Sapping Glacite will attack with melee and drain your prayer points based on the damage it hits for. 
The unstable Glade Kite will attack with melee and build up its own adrenaline bar. Once its adrenaline bar is full, the Glade Kite will pause for a quick moment before exploding, taking away most of its health and half of yours at the same time. You can avoid this by moving out of the way when the unstable Glade Kite is about to explode, or kill it before the adrenaline bar fills up all the way. Note that other players' Glade Kites can hurt you if they explode in your area. The Enduring Glade Kite will not initially attack you, it will stay with the Glade Core. To lure the Enduring Glade Kite away, simply attack it once and run the opposite direction, but don't go too far or it will float back to the Glade Core. The Enduring Glade Kite attacks with melee, and it has an insane amount of defense unless lured away from the Glade Core. The farther away the Glade Kite is, the weaker it gets. After you finish off the last Glade Kite, the Glade Core will be in the final phase. Depending on which Glade Kite you killed last, the Glade Core will take the abilities of that type of Glade Kite. The Sapping Glade Core will drain prayer based on the damage it hits for. The Unstable Glade Core will build up an adrenaline bar and explode in the few spaces around it. Note that other players' Glade Cores can't hurt you if they explode in your area. The Enduring Glade Core will have an insane amount of defense against your attacks. Note that there is no way to avoid this. The most beneficial Glade Kite to kill last is the Unstable Glade Kite because it will have no direct effect on you if you are using Mage as the explosion does not hit from far away. If you can't manage to kill the unstable Glade Kite last, try to at least kill the sapping Glade Kite last, but never, never kill the enduring Glade Kite last. While dealing with all this, the Glade Core will still be attacking with its basic and random attacks. Simply finish off the Glade Core for its remaining health, and voila, you have a Glade Core kill. Here is how I personally kill Glade Cores. It may not be the best method, but it's quick, easy, and it works for me. With patience, time, and practice, you can become as good, or probably even better. Now the first thing we're going to do is set up the inventory. What I use for my inventory is 2 overload flasks, 2 prayer renewal flasks, 10 to 14 prayer restore flasks, more or less depending on the penance aura if I'm using one, optional charming imp for easy charms, and an optional teleport. I use the Tokul Zovering because it teleports me to the fight caves, which has easy access to a bank and a fairing at the same time. And do not forget the runes! This inventory I'm showing here will probably last around an hour. More or less supplies can be brought if you bring a yak. Here is my action bar set up for killing glade cores. I don't use keys to press the abilities on the bar, so I don't have a set order of keys to press. I simply use the action bar as a one-stop interface for everything I need while killing glade cores. The first three slots are potions I use, overloads, prayer renewals, and prayer potions, followed by the soul split curse. I do activate quick prayers, torment, soul split, and item protect, but sometimes I won't need soul split because I'll already be fully healed from blood barrage or the vampirism aura and can quickly turn soul split on or off when I need to to save prayer. The next ability I have on the bar is the freedom ability, to free myself if I'm frozen. Following that are the magic abilities, in no particular order, consisting of rack, concentrated blast, wild magic, impact, combust, chain, and asphyxiate. I will explain the use of each magic ability later in the guide. After you're all set up, it's time to engage in the first phase. I typically start out by letting out the Concentrated Blast ability, then the Wild Magic ability. For me, this will typically automatically bring the Glade Core to half life points, but if it doesn't, I'll throw a Rack ability in there as well. Now the minion phase is probably the hardest and most confusing phase to handle. At half health, the Glade Core will send out three Glade Kite minions. I start this phase by attacking the Enduring Glade Kite with the Combust ability and immediately running away so that it passively damages the Enduring Glade Kite a bit. When I have all three Glade Kites rounded up, I focus the Blood Barrage on the Enduring Glade Kite until it's dead or close to dead, then switch the main attack to the Sapping Glade Kite. Typically what happens when the Sapping Glade Kite is almost dead is that the Unstable Glade Kite will be close to full adrenaline, but it will usually almost be dead as well. So what I do to deal with this is use the chain ability to knock out the sapping glade kite first, and then it will passively knock out the unstable glade kite last. This method, however, doesn't always work. Another scenario, displayed here, shows that the sapping glade kite is still around and the unstable glade kite is about to explode. If you time this perfectly right, you can use the chain ability on the sapping glade kite right when the unstable glade kite is about to explode, and quickly move out of the way. The sapping glade kite will be killed, followed by the unstable glade kite, which will practically kill itself. Here's a few quick tips about the glade kite phase. Always try to kill the Enduring Glade Kite first, and the Unstable Glade Kite last. You will have to avoid the Glade Core's attacks while dealing with the Glade Kites. If you can't tank the Glade Core while fighting the Glade Kites, try to utilize the safe spot shown in this example here. If barraging, try not to kill all three Glade Kites at the same time, or the Glade Core will take the ability of the Enduring Glade Kite. If you kill multiple Glade Kites as the last ones, it will take the abilities in this order depending on which one you kill.
After killing the last Glaikite, assuming you didn't accidentally kill the Enduring Glaikite last, it's all downhill from here. I simply use the Asphyxiate ability to finish the remaining Glaikor's life points, but if it doesn't, I'll throw a Rack or Impact ability at it to finish it off. Here's an example of me killing a Glaikor in real time. So that basically wraps up my Glacor guide. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, you can leave one down in the comments section below, inbox me through YouTube, or even join my French chatting game if you need to talk to me personally. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope this video helped. That's pretty much it. Talk to you guys in Escape. Bye!